Ladies and gentlemen, I talked about this last week. McCarthy grants access to Capitol security footage to January defendants, prisoners right now in D.C., and they've yet to have trials. So this is um, just, what, yesterday. The information came out, and I don't think Republic, I don't think never Trump Republicans, I know that Democrats really care. They don't care if people are languishing in D.C. Uh, jails or a D.C. jail or a prison because they want political retribution. They just don't care. I'm not equating the underlying causes of why there was mayhem and chaos, but that summer prior to January, there was one to two billion dollars in property damage, according to Wikipedia. I support why people demonstrated peacefully that summer. I support the cause. But no cause is worth one to two billion dollars in property damage and 19 lives lost and 14,000 arrests, and you had damage to government buildings as well, federal buildings as well, and police departments. Not a word from Kinsinger or Cheney, not a word, who voted alongside Trump over 90% of the time in Congress, and then suddenly, suddenly um, view him to be this menace to democracy. They did not want... Yeah, Democrats, Kinsinger and Cheney did not want the footage, the complete story out there. Okay, there's 14, there's 40 plus thousand hours of security footage. They don't want that footage out there because the footage obviously is exculpatory in many, many cases. It's exculpatory evidence. What can happen is you might get you might get people right now languishing. There's a number, good number of people who are languishing right now, awaiting trial, who can use this to defend themselves. You might, you have people who had to plead guilty because they didn't have the video footage to defend themselves. Or maybe they couldn't prove without the video footage what they knew was true. So McCarthy grants access to Capitol security footage Uh, to January defendants, that is huge, okay? He can be freeing a great many people. Um, We just had a live stream at 5.30 p.m., so tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, be here for the live stream. We talked about the fact that it is happening, ladies and gentlemen. Some people might have heard that, well, they're not going to release the footage. They will release the footage. They're just going to go and... The process might take a week or two longer because of security issues. That's it. So aside from the security issues, you're going to see um, you're going to see everything that you haven't seen before. There could be footage showing that the opposite of what Democrats and Kinsinger and Cheney have stated took place. The exact opposite. Perhaps you might see people coerced into going into the building or pushed physically or just allowed in. One person was acquitted by because they were allowed into the building. So the side that always talks about lying and, you know, it's like Veritas came out with a video and hit subscribe to this channel, ladies and gentlemen, very important. Veritas came out with a video in 2017 where a producer at CNN stated, yeah, the whole Trump-Russia thing is nonsense. He used a different word, but it's baloney, let's say. And he said, I don't see, he didn't think that there was any evidence uh, or any real evidence that Trump was an operative of any other country. But they still ran it from 2017 up to today. So, Tell me what the difference is when they go after Fox uh, uh, hosts and they say, oh, my God, Fox lied to their viewers. CNN and MSNBC routinely lied to their viewers. You think that everyone at MSNBC at CNN believe that Trump is really was really an operative of the Kremlin or that Trump's tax returns really would lead to his indictment or that he the hush money payments was was going to uh, land. We're going to land him in jail or any major 
obsession they had. He didn't get indicted in Georgia, Trump. He didn't get indicted in New York. He didn't get indicted for January. He didn't get indicted in, during the Mueller probe. So everything that they've talked about in one way or another has been either a lie or a lie by omission or sensationalized coverage full of falsehoods. But that's the thing. It's very lucrative. You have the only thing that they have against Trump, because we had record low poverty under Trump in 2019. Objectively, Trump's policies were better. Objectively. We had record low poverty. We had um, the Doha agreement that Biden completely botched. But the Abraham Accords, first president to step foot in North Korea. We did not, we were not 90 seconds to midnight. We did not have six to nine percent inflation. Okay, so we did not have these things. We did not have all of these things. We have all of these problems now. We're 90 seconds to midnight, closer than ever to a nuclear annihilation. We already have a confrontation. And all that they don't really care. Media doesn't care. They they look at the world in a manner the way they reacted to Trump is actually would actually be appropriate to the things taking place now. You have a spy balloon that traversed the entire country. And then immediately after you trail train derailments. Okay. So you have a whole bunch of things, very bizarre things taking place all at once. You have uh, crime, homelessness, inflation, real wages down. Crime is up throughout the country. We didn't have these problems with Trump. Like, absolutely, categorically did not. The only way, see, Trump, politicians feed off of uh, media. They need favorable media coverage. That's why when Kinzinger and Cheney left, they couldn't market themselves post-politics. They, they couldn't say, oh, I used to be a, a congressman, a Republican congressman or a congresswoman during Trump's administration because they voted alongside the president 90 plus percent of the time. So they're, the, way they, they, the way they got to redefine themselves is, oh, I oppose Trump because of January, but you, nobody got to see the entire footage. It's like, it's like they didn't think that Trump was a menace to democracy his four years because they voted alongside him in Congress over 90% of the time. But the January committee was the perfect, you know, escape plan from being a Republican during Trump's administration. So they said, oh my goodness, he's a menace to democracy. Even though they voted alongside him 90% of the time. and his policies worked. In terms of a Republican president, he is the most popular, even more popular than Reagan. So his policies worked. The only thing they had really, never Trumpers and Democrats, is the scary, uh, frightening footage of people committing crimes and the mayhem and chaos that day in January. But now we're going to, now that entire, all of that is going to collapse very soon. So anybody who, who heard that it's not really happening or it's not really the footage, it's not going to be sliced and diced. They just, they just want to make sure that, you know, um, they just want to make sure that certain elements of the building aren't shown for the world to see. That's not that bad. That's not a bad thing. So they're going to address the security concerns, but that's not really going to have anything to do with, um, you know, watering down or diluting the truth, the coverage that we haven't seen. So in any way, it's not about security. Democrats don't care about the security. They just want to keep a narrative going. They want to keep uh, a view, a viewpoint going that Trump is a menace. And he tried to devour democracy and, um, you know, that's all they care about, really. But this is going to be a huge moment. This is going to be even more enlightening than the Twitter files. So we already had the Twitter files. We have McCarthy giving um, January defendants the footage, giving Fox News the footage. 
you wait now for impeachment, which will start and hunt. Then they're they're closing in. I mean, they're they're James Comer and Jim Jordan are closing in on uh, Hunter and Joe and everyone around them. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe to this channel right now.